TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we will not be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK and all around the world. Because I do understand that some of the people from where we're doing this video at are not a part of the UK. They do not consider themselves a part of the UK. And that's fine. Uh, don't forget, man, if you uh, miss a live and you want to see the next live or catch up on lives, just go to twitch.com and enter the username on the bottom next to the Twitch icon. Don't forget, we do got Patreon and we got merch. We just started Brasic today. Brassic? Whatever, however you pronounce it. Anyway, link to that is down in the description. Let's get into this, man. This is Bloody Sunday. Fifth, this was the 50-year anniversary video. Um, this is from Sin Fien. This is their channel. I never. Somebody said I should look at it. But I'm here now. Let's get into it. This is my warning, YouTube. This is why I'm here, and this is a warning for others to watch. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. Let's get into it, man. Little 20 minute thing. Hopefully, we ain't got to edit too much. I think it's gone badly wrong in the hospital. The doctor just been at the hospital and they're pulling the fist out there and trying to get him out. Is there anything wrong with that, Harry? Well, there is, because there are wrong people. Um, there are about nine, between 9 and 15 killed uh, by the kind of people in the hospital area. There are old women killed as well, and they're still going up there. I mean, they're, they're pigs with full of bodies. Um, and there's three people up there with bodies. Yeah, there are uh, tips all over the place. Uh, and now. Mouth involved in this small mouth was down there, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I think some more. But the Padre is going up to see the commander about all the old people. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. He was laughing at that. Who was? Paul. Was he? Yeah. He wasn't expecting the team for a long time. Interesting. Well, that's right. Look at the 24 hours. Hold on. Good. Excellent. And he said, you know, this is what you have. Yeah. From the Padre's mouth. And I'll tell you later. Yeah, okay. Was that live actual like sound sound clips? Sound like it was. Dura Colum Kill. Derry. A crossroads of ancient ulcer, a site of conflict and siege, dubbed London Derry by the colonists. But a hundred years ago, Derry City Council voted allegiance to Dahl Aaron. The majority of its citizens wanted to live in a united, independent Ireland. It was not to be. Ireland was partitioned. Derry was cut off from its natural hinterland of County Donegal. The city council was abolished. The new unionist government of Northern Ireland, the Orange State, manipulated the electoral system to produce a unionist majority council in a nationalist majority city. Right, we've heard about this. We've heard about this being done in the last thing we watched. Through five decades, Derry became synonymous with gerrymandering, sectarian discrimination, unemployment and poverty. And then in 1968, Derry became the cradle of a new movement, the Civil Rights Movement. The world oh, Derry had a Civil Rights Movement as well, huh? Witnessed our... It makes sense that they would, you see, from Brita what I've heard. A new movement, the Civil Rights Movement. The world witnessed our UC brutality against civil rights marchers, the Battle of the Bogside, and the creation of Free Derry. Repression met resistance, and in August 1971, the Union's regime, with the full backing of the British Tory government in London, imposed internment without trial. That internment week, 
The British Army's Parachute Regiment killed 11 people in the Bally Murphy Massacre in Belfast. The same Parachute Regiment savagely beat peaceful anti-internment protesters on McGilligan Strand, County Derry on the 22nd of January 1972. Then came Bloody Sunday, 30th of January 1972. Thousands of people gathered for the first major civil rights march against internment. It was banned by the Unionist government, but as they assembled at Cregan, the atmosphere was calm and determined. They marched towards the old city, but their way was blocked by British Army barricades at the edge of the bog side. Most of the marchers turned towards Free Derry Corner for the meeting. There was some minor rioting at the barricades and the British Army responded with tear gas and water cannon by then a regular occurrence in Derry. But this day was different. Like America. Without warning, the soldiers of the Parachute Regiment opened fire on the crowd. With their high-powered rifles, they shot people at close range. Some were... In a riot they did that? The water... Listen, the high-powered water cannon is enough. These are civilians with no weapons. This is how civil war gets started. Were killed outright. Some high powered rifles, they shot people at close range. Some were killed outright. Some were gravely wounded. Some were shot as they lay in the ground or sought shelter and tried to help others. The firing of the paros echoed through the bog side and when it was over, 13 men and boys were dead. Another man died later from his injuries. RIP to everybody who lost their lives on that day and any other day that can, would have had loss of life during this conflict that is still probably going on. Immediately, the British... But not in such a... not like heavily like this, it's not, right? Government lies began. They told the world the dead men were bombers and gunmen. They set up the Widgery Tribunal to whitewash the murders. But the evidence against them was damning. The commander of the Parachute Regiment in Derry, Colonel Derek Wilford, was rewarded the Order of the British Empire by the Queen of England. The people of Ireland and people worldwide came out in solidarity with Derry. The British Embassy in Dublin was burned to the ground. The old Orange State was doomed and within weeks direct rule from London was introduced. The long march towards justice and truth for Derry went on. The long journey to Irish unity, equality, and lasting peace. You know what's crazy? I was looking up stuff for Bloody Sunday. This is the longest video I could find because I wanted to... When I watch stuff like this that involves history, I kind of want to get like a full picture of it, not just like a one-minute, two-minute segment that don't really explain nothing to me. Uh, like, I could go read a book on this probably, but, you know, we're here. But I couldn't really find not a lot of stuff. Which says a lot. If you know what I'm talking about, if you if you read in between the lines, that says a lot. Continues. I mean, are these all the lives lost? John F. Duddy, 17, 17, 17, 19, 20. These are young people. 27, 34. Whoa, let me move. That's disrespectful. One hundred percent RIP to everybody. Continue. Is that it? Okay, they're gonna talk about it. Bloody Sunday was one of the darkest moments in the history of our city. British soldiers ravaged through the bogside and gunned down innocent civilians who were marching against internment and for civil rights. But the people of Derry are strong and resilient. For five decades, the Bloody Sunday families have campaigned for truth and justice and successfully challenged the whitewash of the Widgery Inquiry. And they did. June 2010 was a turning point in the city's history. The victims and their families were vindicated when the British Prime Minister apologised and described the killings as unjustified and unjustifiable. This weekend, as we mark 50 years on, Derry is... 
50 years on, two years ago, that was 2021, 2022. So in 2010, they said the prime minister like apologize. So that would be 12. It took them 30 years to apologize for something that was obvious, heinous and unneeded and unwarranted probably. That's tough. That's tough. It's a very different place and an ever-changing city. My generation has had huge opportunities in front of us. The right to a first-class education, to have a decent home. I like watching videos like this also because it, it really, like, when you watch stuff like this, it sparks something in people who are racist to leave comments, and it gives me the perfect opportunity to block y'all. <laughs> so comment away so we can get these blocks ready, man. Because last video I did on the IRA and... Y'all was saying some crazy stuff and y'all got blocked. And I hope you made a new account to watch silently and just know I'm talking about you. We are all human and, and, and you know what I'm saying? We uh, spread love. To shape our future and to live in peace. That is what we want to build for this city and for future generations. So once again, we stand with the Bloody Sunday families, many of them from a new generation solidarity. Future generations will know the story of what happened on Bloody Sunday. Building peace, creating opportunities and a dairy in Ireland that puts the interests of ordinary workers and families first. That is the city's legacy. Hello, my name is Tony Doherty. I'm the chair of the Bloody... Doherty? That man's name sounds familiar. Sunday Trust in Derry. Uh, and I'm standing in the Museum of Free Derry, um, which is built adjacent to where the massacre of Bloody Sunday took place. Um, the history of the, the family struggle and the Bloody Sunday justice campaign is housed within uh, these premises and it has played a place. For the best part of the last 50 years, the Bloody Sunday families have campaigned very uh, vigorously to establish the Truth and Justice campaign to clear the, the, the names of their the, of their loved ones, um, to have the the despised Widgery report overturned, and to bring to justice those who were responsible for the uh, murders and attempted murders on on Bloody Sunday. Um, so we have fought for quite a long time. Um, in, in Derry, we took over by and large from the role of, of Sinn Féin in terms of the annual commemoration and then it became a family's commemoration and then a campaign commemoration and all that history is, is, is lodged here and we're very, very proud uh, of it. Um, as many as, many as will know, the, the, the good names of our, uh, of our loved ones were besmirched by the British Army and the British Government and that was part of the uh, compelling circumstances for the families to get together on the 20th anniversary and begin the long campaign to have all that uh, changed and overturned. So I am proud to stand here today and say that we have uh, changed history. We have changed the, the official history of the deaths of our loved ones. And uh, I'm glad they was able to do that, man. Get the history books corrected. You know what I'm saying? Um, get the real stories told. And unfabricate these fabrications that was brought up to justify what was what happened on this day. I'm glad these families got you know to be to put their minds at peace, even though they will never be you know they'll never be able to deal with that fully what happened. But they they could they get some type of peace right mentally as long as they're. Family members that are lost are not getting blamed for starting it and, and being the aggressors, or probably, right? Uh, that history is, is, by and large, seen as a, as a contribution towards peace and prosperity in the city of Derry and beyond, and as an example of, uh, of peace and reconciliation and truth-finding that has been... Uh, That's cool. I wonder if stuff goes on like that in America. I would... I'm, I'm telling y'all, I know more about... <laughs> the history of the UK and Ireland that I do about America and what has been overturned and what has been going on because I watch y'all every day. I never cared about what was happening here until now, until I got to this age. Like, 
Now, the, the, the knowledge that I've got from y'all makes me curious about what's going on in my own home. You know what I'm saying? And without y'all, I would have no curiosity of what was going on in America. I would... I don't care. But, I, like, it's important, obviously. Emulated in our countries. The role of the trust itself is to support the families, to preserve and conserve uh, the history of this community, hence the Museum of Free Dairy. And we're all very proud that we own it, lead it, and have developed it. I'm standing well, I thought it was about to be a commercial. I was going to ask for a refund for my premium. Oh, here in Derry, in amongst the streets where the Civil Rights March Michelle. had travelled on that crisp Sunday afternoon on the 30th of January 1972. As the marchers made their way through the streets of Derry 50 years ago with placards, banners and a determination for civil rights, they were met with the gunfire of the British Army. Bloody Sunday was a mass... Just think about it, bro. Civil rights was going on here. Civil rights movement was going on there, here and in America about about the same time, right? About the same time. About the same time. I don't, I can't, I need to do some more research on what was going on exactly here and things of that nature, but let's see. It's like of innocence. The British state feared. I don't think that ever anything like happened like, like this before. I would know. I would have known about it. An age like second class citizenship and an equal future for all. For the right to a home, for the right to a job, for the right to vote. That generation helped to shape ours. The winds of change are upon us and the momentum for a new Ireland and the demand for an Ireland that guarantees universal rights and equal opportunities for all citizens is growing. On the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. Girl, so my people was just getting bogged down everywhere. God, they, God. Y'all know I'm part Irish, so God damn. Then y'all know I'm black, obviously. God damn. And then I'm Native American. Can I get some peace in any of my... In any of my... You know what I'm saying? In any of my mixtures? <sighs> Guess not. I want to pay tribute to the Bloody Sunday families. Your determination and your dignity over the past. I'm not gonna lie, that's peak. Like I just like like stuff like this made me realize like all the mixtures of what I am was going through it, and that's what probably brought them together to make something like me. You know what I'm saying? Salute to God. <laughs> also, you know what I'm saying? But you know that that same heartbreak and heartache and tragedy and what was going on in those times brought them through three three four groups together. It's tough. Past fifty years has been remarkable. It is because of your tireless efforts over many decades that the truth of what happened on Bloody Sunday is now known throughout the world. In 2022, we owe it to the victims of Bloody Sunday and their families to work to build a new... Dang, and my girl's Palestinian. Oh, my Lord. Think about if we have a baby. That's tough. It ain't tough, man. My child gonna know the history of all everything. My, my daughter gonna know the history. So I know any any a child of of mine. We gonna read some books. Hit the library. It's important. If you read to your child young, they will they will take that into their soul and get to reading on their own and figuring stuff out. You and a better future for all citizens. One that will never allow the injustices of the past to be repeated. The days of rights being denied are gone, and they are not coming back. That's wishful thinking. I'm going to let that be known right now. That is wishful thinking. That's what we all hope for. But history has a crazy way of repeating itself. Those who continue to hark back to the days of nationalists being second class citizens and being denied opportunities in life will not succeed in dragging our society backwards. All across this island, this is a huge time of change and of opportunity and we must seize that. So as we remember the 14 innocent civilians murdered on Bloody Sunday and their families' incredible quest for justice, let us work to build a better future for all of our children, a future where equality and rights and justice are guaranteed in a new and agreed Ireland. Somebody said in the comments, the difference between the UK and America is in the UK we all know what countries we are from. 
and we speak our country's language because our grandparents and parents are first generation and America is not like that, which is crazy. Well, let me explain to you why it's not like that from America. Uh, we were brought here. I can only speak on behalf of the African Americans. We were brought here against our free will on boats. Our languages, our customs were lost. We were taught another way of life. We would, we would um, our, our, a lot of stuff was stripped from us for 400 years. It was bred out of us. Like as rough as that sounds, it was bred out of us. So, and, and I hear a lot of people like, "Oh man, y'all got funny names. Y'all got all these long names." Well, let me explain that as well. Since I'm here, uh, it, when you when when kids were named during those times. Um, they were given long names to identify themselves because, you know, you get sold here, you get sold there, you take your master's last name, you, if they give you a new name, your name is lost. But hopefully you're grown enough to know your real name so somebody else in your family can identify you by that name. You get what I'm saying? There's, there's a couple of reasons why, why Americans, black Americans that don't know their history. And it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? My mom couldn't even tell me what she is. So, like, how? How? Her grandma couldn't tell you. Her grandma couldn't tell it was, it was, Nobody knows. Nobody knew what we were until I said it. Until I did an ancestral test. <laughs> and I told them what we were. You know what I'm saying? So, that's, you know, that's that's really the reason type shit. <laughs> This her name, Kara McGinnis. She just singing the song "We Shall Overcome." It came off as like she wrote it. I don't know when they put it like this. It should say "sung by Kara McGinnis." But let me restart the song. That's disrespectful. I'm paused in the middle of it. We shall overcome. We shall. This whole song. I just heard the first part. We shall overcome. We'll not be afraid today, darling. Deep in our hearts, I do believe we'll not be afraid to. You know what's crazy? This this song is still relevant <laughs> in a lots of lots of parts of the world. Peace, we shall live in peace, and we shall live in peace someday, darling. Deep in our hearts, I. Talk about it. We 
shall live in peace someday. We shall overcome. We'll walk hand in hand. We shall live in peace someday. Darling, deep in our hearts, I do believe we shall overcome someday. Oh, this was 2022 was the 50th anniversary. Pretty much all young people, you know. Even now when stuff goes on in these marches and, and things that people be outside for these causes, it be all young people, really. Don't get me wrong, it be older people in there too, but like mostly. I'm super young now, 17. Doherty. That's a popular Irish last name. Huh? R.I.P. 50 years on from the travesty and heartbreak of Bloody Sunday, we stand with the victims' families and the community that bore the unspeakable loss of 14 innocent lives. Innocent fathers, husbands, sons, uncles, brothers, friends, gunned down by the British Army on the streets of their hometown, the irrepressible town of Derry. Today we are inspired by the determination and resilience of all those who have campaigned tirelessly for truth and for justice. Their dignity stands in stark contrast to the shameful behaviour of the British system that has for decades resisted, covered up and sought to thwart the families at every turn. Their courage outshines the shame of the current Tory government in London that today seeks to provide amnesty to the British soldiers that carried out the atrocities of Bloody Sunday and all those who perpetrated British state murder in Ireland. There is no support for this shameful amnesty on this island or internationally. It flies in the face of truth and justice. It flies in the face of reconciliation and the new future that so many of our people from all communities, identities and backgrounds are working to build together and for each other. In the same spirit of those who marched for civil rights, those who live every day for our new future of respect and progress will overcome. We refuse to be dragged back to the dark days of the past by those who offer only conflict and disharmony. This generation is moving on. We reach for tomorrow and look to better days. The days of second-class citizenship and discrimination must be consigned to history. In our new Ireland, there can be no barriers to what you can achieve, no limits 
to high you, how high you can climb and no boundary to how far you can travel in life. Our new Ireland will be home for everyone. Home where we celebrate. I ain't gonna lie, she reading the hell out of that teleprompter. I feel it. Celebrate each other when we're at our strongest and protect each other when we fall behind. Today we transcend old divisions and a new dawn is breaking. Despite the challenges we now face together, this is a decade of real opportunity, of hope and excitement. A decade in which we can fully realise the full potential of our island. In so many ways, the enduring spirit of Derry's people epitomises the vision of a brighter future for all of Ireland. Derry is a city that will no longer be left behind. A city rising in unison with Ireland's new generation stepping forward to claim its destiny, to demand better, to achieve everything previously denied. The expansion at McGee University is a powerful symbol of all the possibilities that lie ahead. Out of traumatic and harrowing past, Derry emerges to a future brimming with energy and positivity. As we live through the dying days of partition, the winds of change blow all round us. We continued the journey to a new and united Ireland, an Ireland where workers, families and community comes first. These are the moments when history is made and the future is shaped. It's time for each and every one of us to seize the opportunity. Mar is law nua e. Aum nua, is re nua e, igor era tola koonanus, agus kiartish, a to ser o idir yalu. Er Hold on, wait, what, what, is, what language is, what is, what's going on? Er le kiarta tora feige le gokdina airi lo sesail, fui huvnus, agus rahunus. This is our moment, this is our time. Let's grasp it together. Did I just learn something new? I never knew that. Hold on, what language was that? Is that an Irish language? Let me look at the chat. Let me see what's going on right now. Irish. Irish. What is that? She's speaking Irish. That's raw. All right. 50 years ago, on the streets of Derry, 14 innocent people were murdered by the British Army. Today, we cast off the shackles of... I swear I didn't know Ireland had, Irish people had their own language. ...pression and with hope, with confidence, we remember them. I didn't know my Irish people had their own language, our own language, Scottish... Oh, Irish and We will Scottish. never forget them. And we won't rest until they have truth and justice. We'll work night and day for an Ireland of equals. That is the very best way to honour their memories. Okay. Very informative. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. If you got something negative to say or something crazy in the comments, please believe I will be blocking. <laughs> ah! Uh, not negative. I mean, you speak how you speak, but like, watch what you watch what you say, man. Go.